Welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at Node Summit 2017 at Downtown San Francisco Mission Bay Conference Center. We've been coming here for years. The, the vibe is growing and exciting and some really interesting use cases in earlier sessions about how fast the node adoption is happening in some type some uh, of these enterprises. And we're excited to have Michael Dawson. He's a software developer, but more importantly, he's the Node.js community lead for IBM. Michael, welcome. Hey, thank you, thank you. It's great to be here and nice to be able to talk to you and talk about Node.js and what's going on in the community. So. Absolutely, just to get your impressions in terms of, of, of a temporal perspective of how this has changed and evolved over time. A lot of talk about the community. I think the facility here only holds like 800 people. I think it's full to the capacity. You know, how has it been growing and, and it kind of what's your perspective from a little bit of a higher point of view? It, it's really great. You know, I was at Node Summit three years ago and it's great to see, and other conferences, and it's great to see that over the years how we get more and more people involved, different constituencies, you know, more people who are deploying Node.js. And even just, you know, day to day, we see a larger, number, a larger and larger number of collaborators who are getting involved and contributing to make, you know, the success of, of Node really grow and the functionality and all that great stuff. Right. So what's, the, what's your function inside of IBM as being kind of a Node Right. Uh, advocate for the community, I assume, without outside the walls of IBM, but then also inside right. the walls of IBM. So you know, it's I'm, you know, I, I really have the, the, the sort of the pleasure to be able to work out in the community. That's that's the large part of my job. But I also work very closely with our internal teams uh, who focus on Node.js, supporting it for our bundling products. IBM has about 50, 60 products that bundle Node.js. We also support it through our platforms like Bluemix. And so I work with the team to support those. You know, if you're running Bluemix and Node, it's the code that, you know, that, that we've contributed and built. And our development approach is very much out, you know, do that out in the community. So if a particular product needs some sort of feature, we'll go out and work in the community to do that and then pull that back in to use it. So you see we have about 10, 10 collaborators. I'm, I'm one of them. And the great thing is that you know, I get to be involved in a lot of the, the, the working group efforts like the, the NAPI, the build work groups, the LTS work groups. And, you know, so it, my role is really to sort of bridge the community work that we do there to our internal needs and, and, and consumers as well. Right. So how is the uptake within the IBM world of this technology within all the different stacks that you guys have? I, you know, I work in the Runtime Technologies team and we were called the Java Technology Center for a number of years. We're now called the Runtime Technology Center because we, we see it's a really, it's a polyglot world with Node.js being one of the three key runtimes. You know, it's Node.js, Java, and Swift. Right. And, you know, we see that because we see our customers as well as our products, you know, really embracing Node and using it in all sorts of places. They've mentioned earlier that Bluemix, our PaaS, is a very heavy user of uh, Node.js in, in terms of the implementation of the UIs and right. the, the backend services, as well as, you know, Node.js is the biggest runtime in terms of deployments in that environment as well. So it's interesting, uh, we had Monica on earlier from Intel, I think you're going to be on a panel with her later yes. today about benchmarking. Yeah. And she talked about that there's some unique challenges in trying, trying to figure out you know, how to benchmark these types of applications against the kind of the benchmark standards of old. I wonder if you could share some of your, your thoughts right. on this challenge and, and you know, for the folks that aren't going to be here watching the panel, what are some of the topic areas that you want to make sure right. that get exposed in that panel? So, you know, I, I've been working with the benchmarking work group. I actually, you know, kicked it off a, a, a number of years back. The, the, the approach that we're following is we want to document the key use cases for Node, as well as the key attributes of the runtime, like, you know, starting up fast, being small, the things that have made it successful. Right. As well as the key use cases, like, you know, a, a web front end, back end services for mobile, and then fill in that matrix with important benchmarks. I mean, that's where one of the challenges comes in, and that you know, other languages have a more mature and established set of benchmarks that, that different vendors and different people can use. Right. Whereas, you know, the work in, in the working group is to try and either find benchmarks, encourage people to write those benchmarks, and pull together a more comprehensive suite that we can use. Because performance is important to people, and as a community, we really want to make sure that you know, we we still have encourage a rapid pace of change, but be able to have a good handle on what's going on on the other side. Right. And Having the benchmarks in place should be an enabler in that if you know, we can easily and quickly find out what a change impact has, you know, positive or negative, that'll help us move things forward where, as opposed to you know, if you're uncertain, it's a lot harder to make the decision right. as to which way you should go. It's funny on benchmarking, right? Because on one hand, people just can poo-poo benchmarks because 
you know, I'm, I'm writing my benchmark so that right. it beats your product and, and right. my benchmark, and, and you can write a benchmark the other way. But I think what you just touched on is really important. It's, it's, it's really for optimization of what you're doing for improving your own performance over time. That's really the key to the benchmarks. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the focus of the work in the benchmarking work group is, has been on a framework for like regression testing and, and letting us make the right decision, not competition. Right, I think right. you know some of the, the, the pieces that we develop will perhaps factor into that, but that's not really the core focus, is to get you know, an, a, a good established set and, and other you know, individual companies can then maybe use it for other purposes right. as well. So Michael, before I let you go, I just yep. want to get your perspective. You work for a big company. Yep. Um, I don't think it's as much anymore. It used to be a lot of open source conferences, people were like, oh, we don't want the big people coming right. in, you know, they're going to take it over. Uh, and to get your perspective of, of being kind of that liaison between kind of this, this really organic open source community with a node and, and Big Blue back behind right. you and how you know, kind of you navigate that and in your experience of the acceptance of, of IBM into this community as well as your ability to bring some of that open source ESOs back into IBM. Right. You know, I've found that it's been really great. I love this community. They, they've been very welcoming. I've had no issues at all, you know, getting involved. I think IBM is respected as in the way that we've contributed. We, we, we you know, we're, we're trying to contribute in a very constructive and collaborative way. We, you know, it's nothing that we do, do we really do on our own. If you look at the NAPI, we're working with other individuals, people from, you know, different companies and, or just individual con contributors to come to a consensus on what it should be and, and to basically move things forward. So right. yeah, I, in terms of you know, a big company coming in, you do hear some concerns, but I haven't seen any on the ground impediments or problems. Uh, you know, it's been very welp welcoming and it's been a great experience. All right, very good. All right, well, before I let you go, kind of final thoughts on this event uh, where we are. It's, you know, it's a great event. I always enjoy being able to come and meet people. Uh, a lot of time you work on GitHub, you know somebody's handle, but there's nothing like making that personal connection to be able to like put the face to the name. And you know, it, I think it affects your ongoing sort of interactions when you're not face to face, and so it's a really important thing to do, and that's why I like to come to a lot of these All right, events. well Michael Dawson, we'll let you get back to meeting some more developers. Great. Thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day. Thank you very much. Absolutely, Bye. he's Michael okay. Dawson from IBM. I'm Jeff Frick, you're watching theCUBE. Thanks for watching, we'll catch you next time.